750. Well, aside from its size and it's not now, so is it a 17-inch screen? It's yeah, 17.3. So some, I'm surprised somebody even makes those. Anyway. Apple yeah. stopped making them. I guess they still, yeah, still so, somebody makes them. But this thing is, it's it's built for speed. It's built for raw power. Right. And it's one of those things like, you remember back in the days we used to lug our PCs around and play the games? And right. So now people are bringing on their laptops and this is what they're aiming for. This is your LAN party machine. This is your LAN party machine, yeah. 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 And so... Uh, How heavy is it? It's like seven pounds, six pounds? <laughs> yeah. Looks well, like it. It feels like it's even more... Looks like a desktop yeah. replacement. Yeah. Yes, yes, definitely. Yeah. So it's one of those things if you want to lug around and you want to do everything on it. Uh, it has quite a number of ports on there and even has a DVD drive making adding more to the weight. Why not? <laughs> if yeah, you're going to make not? a thing that big, might as well yeah. put an optical drive in So it has a whole bunch of ports in there, including it has a Thunder Drive port as well. Thunderbolt. Yeah, so Thunderbolt, yeah. excuse me. Yeah. But, That's interesting. We know yeah. this is, we're just starting to see PCs with Thunderbolt. Yeah. On. So yeah. it's this is in line with like some of the stuff like, you know, Alienware, MSI, right. and right. all these other guys, including Razer, which is now starting to get into that. Yeah, place. in fact, I think Chad's reviewing the Razer for a later mm -hmm. uh, episode. So um, I guess when it comes to gaming laptops, the things you care most about are speed yes. for gaming, mm -hmm. a great keyboard and mouse yes. combination, because mm -hmm. that's how you control yep. the game, and a screen that really is, looks good and is immersive. Yeah, and how so does it rate in those categories? So for the screen, we're looking at full HD. So it's 19, 10, 20, 20. So it's your yeah, standard, yeah. you know, full HD. And then you have your full keyboard, including your number pad. That's kind of funny, but I guess... Yeah. For some games, you use that number. Pad. Yeah, so yeah. some people are switch-handed, and they'll, right. you know, they'll actually try to do. You know. Right. No, I do that. <laughs> yeah. I'm a lefty, so I do that. Mm, yeah. Okay. So it's perfect for like when you have the trackpad over here. It's a little bit harder if you're going to be controlling with your WASD setup and try to control. That's control not ideal, way. is it? Yeah. Yeah. So yeah. you're going to have to need a mouse when you're going to use this. But game you, you know, if you're already carrying six yeah. pounds of hardware, you can yeah. carry a couple ounces <laughs> right. of mouse. Definitely. Yeah. Let's see what that screen uh, looks like. It's touch screen? So yeah, it's, uh, well, this one is not touch screen. Not touch screen. Yeah. Windows 8. Yes, Windows 8. And um, we'll just go through some stuff here. Here's what the desktop obviously yeah. is going to look like. And for those that want to see what the resolution, uh, the game looks like in a full resolution, this is, here's Bioshock Infinity running at full res. All now this is an i7. Are they? Uh, yes, this is i7 running on Haswell. It's, it's Haswell as well. Yeah. Okay, mm -hmm. yeah. And is it? Uh, it's using GeForce uh, and Nvidia yeah, it's graphics. It's using 770. 770 is pretty good. Yeah, for a laptop. Series. Yeah. Yeah. And they're because you're not going to get any battery life on this thing. Uh yes. So you're probably looking at when you're maxing this whole thing out, probably three or four hours. You know when you're uh, running it at full blast. Somebody's calling me uh, from Colorado. <laughs> I'll just decline that okay. call. I've got eight phones here. I can't even figure out which one's ringing. Sorry about that. Oh, no problem. <laughs> <laughs> so while uh, let's go, um, pretty much uh, this is running at full blast right now. I'm not like tracking down any enemies or anything. Pretty like, good frame rate? You, yeah, it's a very good frame rate. It's good. And yeah. actually, the, the quality looks pretty good, the too. The quality is great. Yeah. And I mean, this is running at full blast. You know, obviously, you'll have some frame rate dips when you start. How hot does it get? How fast do the fans blow? Is it really? Uh, it gets pretty is hot. Is it about down to take there. off? Yeah, yeah, it's about to take off, and you have, you know, basically the the blowers right where they typically yeah. are located. Um, but it, it's it's pretty good actually. You know, I did a benchmark. Um, Bioshock has its own benchmarks that you could run, and for those who are interested in it, um, there's actually uh, I put them right over here. Okay. And so, it runs at about. You know, 12 or 62 frames per second on average. Okay. Yeah, which is you know, more, more than enough. It's adequate, yeah. Yeah, and at the max it runs at 216, so it's really, really good. Okay. Then I ran this other second benchmark called 3D Mark, which a lot of the gamers use, and it, I got this. And right now it runs 69% better than a lot of the other um, gaming laptops. What was the raw number? I see the it's raw a, number. Uh, yeah. It's about it's 19384. 19384 is good. Yeah. And is that the OpenGL uh, benchmark? Yeah. Yeah. Well, yeah. So that's so, good. That's yeah, it's nice. great. And it does all this stuff in it. You're just right in between, you know, the high-end gaming PC and, and, you know, typical gaming laptop. When you have it cranked up like that, does it feel hot? I mean, would yeah, you? Yeah, it does. Yeah. Yeah. So, I mean, a lot of the times, too, is when you're working on the keyboard, you can feel a little bit of the air coming out through the keys. <laughs> yeah. Especially when it's backlit yeah. like this. That's okay. So but, You're flying along. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. How's the uh, audio on that? The audio is actually pretty good. Yeah. So, um, this has what they call uh, sound media. Um, it's one of their Asus's, um, you know, proprietary type of, uh, but it has also an amplifier, and it doesn't sound tinny. It actually sounds very um, full in terms of at least bass-wise. Um, I played a couple of music here and there, and so it works with a variety of genres, and it works pretty well. 
Now, how much? Does, I'm sure there's different ranges. This is mm -hmm. the one we have here. Is the GX? Is so the this, GX? Yeah. So this is the the 750 JX. There's a JW, which is 700. Uh, the uses the 760 or right. 765 right. G-force, and that one has only 12 gigabytes of RAM versus 16. Which so that's the lower end. This is, you know, actually. What, how much did this come as, as equipped? How much was this? Uh, eighteen ninety nine. Eighteen ninety nine, and yeah. it starts at fourteen hundred bucks. Yeah, it starts for at the lower end. For the so that's not horrible, given you know you're getting a lot of performance out of this thing. Mm -hmm. Let's get the pros and cons. So uh, the pros is is that you got a lot of speed and you can play the latest games. Right. And you can play them play them at full blast. Another cool thing Sorry too. Sorry about that. Oh, this no is problem. the same. Same. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> so the other thing. Uh, that it also has the other pro is the fact that it can um, it it runs a lot of the desktop has a lot of anonymities you'd expect from a regular desktop, and thirdly it's it's just an overall pretty good uh, system. And it comes with a bunch of stuff like it even has uh, Asus Cloud that you can upload 32 gigabytes with. So if you buy one of the laptops, you have about 32 gigabytes of you know cloud storage. You can upload whatever you want to okay. it. And, um, and of course, you have Thunderbolt and all that good stuff. So the cons. The cons, obviously, is the weight and the size. <laughs> yeah. It's a little bit thicker profile. Yeah. So it's, it's, it's similar to what you see in a lot of gaming laptops. Um, the other thing, too, is that it gets a little fingerprinty. And yeah, it has, it's, it's, is it brushed aluminum? Yeah, it's brushed aluminum. Even on the top nickel. there. Yeah. Um, but when you rest your hands on it, if you yeah, get a little see. bit sweaty. Smudges, yeah. yeah it's really and you're going to if you're playing that game. Yes, definitely. Yeah. So, so uh, battery life, heavy. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Um, price is, you know, kind of yeah. middle of the road. Not, not, yeah. It's not bad given what you're yeah. getting, so I don't think that's a so con. So we're going for the somewhat value-conscious PC right. gamer. But right. Would you say buy, don't buy? This is a try. A try. Yeah. So, okay, okay. Yeah. And Bradford Castro, that's the Asus G750 gaming laptop. Looks like a, a fairly solid entry into a very competitive yes. uh, field for the mm -hmm. gamer. And yes. I do like the, the metal of it. Yes. But, yeah. man, that thing's heavy. Yeah, that thing's big. <laughs> <laughs> hey, thank you, Radford. Radford Castro uh, in charge of engineering here. You can find out more about this fantastic offer by clicking the link in the description. Hey guys, this is Shannon Morse, the producer of Before You Buy, and today I have the MSI GE40 Ultra Cool Gaming Laptop Deluxe. And this guy costs $12.99 on the market. The version that I have today for testing and training and all sorts of fun gaming is $13.99. So it's a whole $1,400. So it's a little expensive, but to be honest, it's a pretty good price point for a gaming laptop rig, especially with the specs in this guy. So first off, the design is pretty nice. On the back, you have these very cool design dragon eyes, and they're also backlit whenever you turn on your laptop. It also has an aluminum casing, too. To be honest, that feels a little bit plasticky to me, but eh, it's aluminum, so I can live with it. It's also 4.4 pounds, so that's really lightweight for all the specs that are inside of this. Now, those specs. It's an i7 Haswell CPU, very nice top of the market. You also have an NVIDIA GeForce GTX 760M GPU. Now, to be honest, that one is pretty new. It's fairly awesome, and it's a great one for the market. You also get Windows 8. And with Windows 8 in this screen, it's a little bit weird. I'll get back to the screen in a second. It has gigabit LAN, which is excellent for LAN parties. You get really, really fast connection speeds with your Ethernet connection. And it also has BG and N uh, wireless, as well as Bluetooth 4.0. Now, you get plenty of space on here in case you want to download your games from Steam or what have you. It's a 128 solid state drive. And you also get seven, 750 gigs of hard disk space as well. So plenty of room to download your entire Steam library if you want to. Now let's talk about this screen for a little bit. Now when I first turned it on, I, I thought this was a little bit weird. Yes, it is Windows 8, but it does not have a touch screen, which is kind of weird whenever you are trying to work in the Windows 8 interface outside of video games. Now it is non-reflective, which is really nice whenever you are playing lots of games, especially if you're playing FPS. It's really important to know where you know your, uh, your teammates are as well as the guys you're playing against. 
It is 14 inches, so it's a nice big screen, and it has a really nice resolution as well. It's 1600 by 900. A little bit bigger could have been awesome, but I'm okay with 16 by, 1600 by 900. Now the keyboard and the trackpad, also very important when you're gaming. Uh, the keyboard is a chiclet keyboard. There are a few different keys on here that I wish were a little bit larger, but also something I can live with since I'm really just using W, A, S, and D whenever I'm playing video games. Uh, as far as typing on it, when I'm normally doing like blog posts and working on emails and such like that, it's pretty decent to handle. It has very good flex to the keyboard. There's not, it doesn't feel cheap at all, and it's very rounded. So it's altogether a pretty decent keyboard. The trackpad is a little bit different than what you'll find on the market nowadays. It has a separate click button for your right and left click, as opposed to the normal ones that you'll find on the market, which only have one fluid trackpad altogether. So I actually had a lot of fun playing video games on this guy. I found that it was really easy, it was very simple. I had great FPS rates as far as uh, playing some of the games that were in my Steam library. It downloaded them really quick, especially off Ethernet. And overall, I really enjoyed the processing speeds of video gaming. So let's get into my pros and cons. So first off, my pros. Gaming processing was superior as far as laptops go. Of course, nothing is ever going to replace the PC that I built at home for around the same price, but as far as a laptop goes, it's pretty darn good. Also, the trackpad was a pretty nice pro. With a separate click button, it was actually pretty useful if I didn't want to pull out a mouse to play my video games. And last but not least, on the pro side, it is definitely portable. I could fit this really easily into my normal computer bag, and it wasn't so heavy that I was lugged down to the side. So I could definitely see myself taking this to LAN parties if I still went to those. Bring soap, guys, really important. And last off, the cons. There is no touchscreen. That's a really big bummer for me, especially when I'm starting to get used to Windows 8 these days. Also, the fan is somewhat noisy on this, especially when you're running really, really high graphics, and it does have a subpar LCD screen. I'm really not happy that the viewing angles on this are not as good as they should be. Also, it's not as bright as I would be happy with. So all in all, my verdict, is this a buy, try, or a don't buy? I have to give it a try. It's definitely a really nice laptop, especially if you want to take it to LAN parties and go gaming with your friends. Now as far as a day-to-day -day computer, yes it is a little bit pricey, but it is still within a pretty decent range when you include all those excellent qualities and spe specs on the inside. So that was my review of the MSI GE40. Back to you guys in the studio.